Hi, this is Christopher Bruza. Welcome back. Um, today we're looking at the results of my first ballistic gelatin tests. Uh, we tested three cartridges in 10% ordnance gel, uh, two of these blocks, uh, 40 inches long. Um, these are the long range blocks. I think they're 10 inch by 11 inch, 10% um, ordnance gel. Um, <clears throat> and I put up a poll. I wasn't sure what to, to test. And I plan on doing quite a few of these because uh, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm an engineer. I love numbers. <laughs> I love looking at data. Uh, and that's kind of what this is. Um, the results were very surprising. Uh, but what won the poll was comparing uh, 30-06 to 338-06 to 35 Whalen, which if you're not familiar um, for 338-06 and 35 Whalen, it's the 30-06 cartridge and you just expand the neck and obviously bore diameter uh, to accept a larger, heavier bullet. And the thought there is uh, with the heavier bullet, you're going to get more penetration. Obviously, the lighter bullet's going to go faster, uh, but you're going to see more penetration with uh, the heavier bullets. And uh, if you've watched my other videos, generally, I shoot a, a 180 grain in the uh, 30 out six, um, and a 225 grain in the 338 out six, which is my main hunting rifle and a 250 grain in the 35 Whalen. However, it's much more common uh, to shoot a 225 grain in the 35 Whalen. And I wanted an apples to apples comparison. Uh, so I made sure to test the Nosler Acubond bullet in each one. So what we have here, uh, without giving too much away, uh, we have a 180 grain, 30 caliber Nosler Acubond. We have a 225 grain, 33 caliber, or 338 caliber Nosler Acubond. And we have a 225 grain, a bit lighter than I like, uh, 358 caliber Nosler Acubond. I also tested my hunting bullets. Um, so this one right here is a 250 grain Nosler partition uh, that I shoot a 35 well and 358 diameter. And uh, what I normally hunt with with the 338.6 is the Barnes TTSX, the tipped TSX all copper bullet. Um, and you don't see that here for a very good reason. Um, actually, you can kind of see some blue flecks in there. That's, that's, that's the tip of the bullet. But um, So let's get into it. Uh, I found the results um, interesting. Some were as predicted, but some were certainly as not. Now, I must um, uh, disclose that I had my, I have a few GoPros. Now, um, I must disclose that I tried to get higher uh, frame rate footage. I had my GoPro set up on the block at uh, 240 frames per second. Um, unbeknownst to me, my GoPro will not work anymore. It keeps saying card failure when you go when you push your end recording and it goes to, to save the video. Um, so I was not able to obtain higher, not high speed, but higher speed than a iPhone uh, can produce. And luckily I had my iPhone, iPhone as a backup. Um, so sadly the video is at 60 frames per second and I can't get good slow-mo 
video, and uh, I will do better next time, but uh, it is what it is. As you can see, this is just the first block. I had to cut the second block up to, to get the bullets out of it. Uh, but this is the, the portion um, that does the most. In a hunting application, this is the portion that does the most damage to ensure an ethical and quick kill. Um, this is what we call the temporary um, stretch cavity. Uh, you've got the permanent stretch cavity, which you can see, um, but if you actually look at the footage, this block uh, expands and contracts, and uh, all that's ripping tissue, uh, disconnecting organs. Um, I mean, how often do you, you know, go to field dress a deer and the heart's no longer connected, or uh, the lungs are just soup? Um, the, the spleen, the kidneys are disconnected. Uh, that's all due to the temporary stretch cavity. Um, so I don't know which one of these actually, I think, I, um, from your angle, I don't think you can see it, but these are all pretty much the same. I'll spoil the video and say, all these are pretty much the same up, up front. Uh, what varies is the penetration. Um, so you've got a massive uh, temporary uh, cavity up front, uh, which is just going to do immense damage to the internal organs. Um, and what varied was the penetration? So here's that 30 out six bullet, extremely deformed. Uh, I mean, this bullet did not, I wouldn't say this bullet's a failure. It, it held together. It's still mostly one piece. Um, but that was really close to um, jacket separation or a, a large portion of the jacket separating, which, which then you have nothing to hold the lead together. So um, that left the muzzle at 2,000. 736 feet per second. Uh, my Kestrel Applied Ballistic software says that it impacted, um, backing up, uh, this was shot at 100 yards. Um, verified with my Leica range finder, exactly 100 yards. I was shooting prone, um, the rifles on a bipod, a lab radar, uh, system on a four pole mount directly above the barrel. And uh, <clears throat> this bullet, uh, so it left at 2736, which is reasonable velo velocity, uh, especially for factory ammo. Um, these three were factory, actually, all the Acubons were factory ammo. Impacted at 2565, 2565 feet per second. So it lost, um, actually all these lost just about 7% of their velocity in the first 100 yards. So listening to the numbers, they sound big, but when you break it into percentage, it's not, not, not too insane. Um, so it impacted and just about all of these expanded uh, the TTSX expanded a little bit quicker, which we'll get into, but most of these uh, Acubons expanded within the first two and a quarter to two and a half inches 
of the block. So hitting the tissue, uh, it took them about two and a half inches to expand. Um, dumped a ton of energy. Uh, and you can see some fragments of lead primarily. Uh, you've got a couple brass, uh, sorry, copper fragments uh, in the gel. But the majority of the fragments are lead. And that's going to be due to this fragmenting. This, th Under that velocity, these pressures, this lead is going to become <sighs> extremely pliable, uh, bordering on a almost liquid state, especially on the edges here. Uh, they're seeing immense amounts of heat um, due to friction. And um, you can see the way that this lead is curling around uh, the copper, uh, the immense amount of heat. So what you're seeing is little pieces of this lead being left behind. That's to be expected. Uh, I would never expect 100% uh, bullet retention uh, or bullet weight retention, more correctly. Uh, but I mean, this hit, I, I, I don't know, out of my 300 wind mag, I shoot uh, 200 gram bullets. Um, I don't know what a 300 wind mag with 180 grain at 100 yards would do. Um, I, I would guess it's probably close to, to a, a full bullet failure, um, which we will test. Uh, but I don't know if I'd want to send it much faster than that, that 2,700, whatever, 2,736 feet per second. Uh, so the retained weight uh, was 150.9 grains. So from 180 to 150.9 uh, that's a 15% decrease, so you know 85% retained weight, which is pretty good. I was expecting a lot less looking at that bullet. More importantly, um, as I had mentioned, and as you can see, these temporary wound cavities are all very, very, very similar. Um, so the penetration we got out of this was uh, 28 and 3 eighths inches. So this block in front of me is 28 inches. So it went roughly one block and a half uh, farther than this. Um, I don't know how big elk are. Um, I'm guessing probably close to that 28 inches. Um, but a deer, you're certainly going to have a, a pass through. And I have shot several deer with the 30 out 680 grain acubon i've never recovered one um, i have actually never recovered a bullet from a deer i have shot and okay maybe you say north carolina deer are small the deer in kansas are, are elephants fine uh regardless i've never recovered a bullet um and that includes one i thought i would recover um it was like a brisket shot in the neck that went down and it it ran along the ribs breaking several ribs uh, and it passed out the hind corner quarters about you know, three inches to the left of the, of the anus uh, of course that that was a, a Barnes TTSX out of 30-06 but um, I have shot several deer with this Acubond and never recovered one. Uh, generally, you try to shoot deer broadside, and they aren't going to be much more than 15, 16 inches broadside. So you're still dumping the majority of the energy into the deer. So most of these expanded within two and a quarter to two and a half inches. And this temporary cavity where you see all of this um, fanfare up front, uh, it tapers out around 12, 12 and a half inches, and it's very consistent. So most of the energy, which is what you're trying to do, you're trying to take the energy from combustion, expansion, and shoving that bullet down the bore and dump that into the animal. And what we're seeing is most of it's dumped within the first 12 inches, roughly. Um, 
Now, if you shot it in the air, it would not expand and not do anything. Not that somebody would try to do that, but uh, shooting it in the uh, boiler room, it's going to expand, dump energy, and probably lead the animal to blood trails, or sorry, to places for blood to leak out, a uh, good blood trail to follow, and uh, hopefully a very quick incapacitation. So that's the uh, 30 out 6. So, this bullet surprised me, the 250 partition. If you aren't familiar, the partition is a older design. Uh, it was made, I'd be completely off on this, uh, but in the 70s, 80s uh, time frame when you had like the ruined and core locked and stuff and you were seeing a lot of uh, core jacket separations. So the way the partition is made is you have a lead front hollow point and then there is a web uh, connecting the diameter of the bullet and you have more lead behind in the intention the intention is that the front will expand and uh, the lead will expand with the bullet. But if you get any sort of failure, and this one actually, when it was found in the, uh, the gel, uh, was almost backwards. And if it went much further, it would have pulled this lead much further out. I think it was found like slightly out of it. Um, but the intention is you have uh, a copper jacket with the lead in the back retained. Um, this was before they bonded bullets and, and stuff like that. They're, they're great bullets in, in my opinion and in, in my experience. Uh, so I was a little surprised with the results of this. Uh, they didn't penetrate farther. Um, it's a good bullet. Every deer I have shot with it has left a great blood trail um, I don't know if I can find pictures of it but uh, it's left meat bone cartilage whatever on the ground where it was shot uh, and never went more than 20 30 yards I don't know I've shot a handful of deer with them uh, I like this bullet if, if I were to go hunting bear this would be a number one choice for me before doing these tests. Now granted the velocity was a little slow. I can probably bump that up. Uh, the powder I'm using I should probably change and I intend to but I, I haven't I haven't got around to it and it works great on deer. So this bullet left the muzzle at 2384, 2384 feet per second. And it's a flat base bullet. It's not a boat tail like these others, actually all the others. Uh, and it impacted the block at 2202 feet per second. Um, expanded great, uh, expanded along consistently along with the others. Um, and penetrated uh, 30 and 5 eighths inches. 
So 30.625 inches, so that's this plus a half and a bit. Um, so it penetrated uh, fairly deep. Um, and that's a, a 250 grain is the heaviest bullet I tested. So I would have expected this to penetrate the furthest. It did not. Um, but I think I need to re rework my loads for the 35 Whalen. I'm using IMR uh, 4350 powder. Or is it 4065? One of the two. Which one works for 35 Whalen? I think it's 4065. Anyway, um, I do have other powders that will work better, and I need to sit down and work up a load, because the load I have worked up now is accurate. It's very, very accurate, uh, very consistent, uh, so I've been hesitant to change. Um, I did get good penetration, but um, I think I need to rethink that load. So this was a test more for me than comparing uh, the different cartridges because it's, it's not the same bullet, not the same or not a comparable velocity to the bullet. Um, so the next shot I took was the Nosler Acubon 225 in the 338 OT6. Um, and uh, let's see how that went. Okay, so here is the bullet. Uh, this is what I originally hunted with in my 338.6. Uh, and then I ended up using uh, the Barnes TTSX. Um, but when I had that rifle built, I made up some loads and sent them off with the rifle to benchmark barrels uh, so they could match the chamber to it. Uh, so it shoots these great, um, but I don't really have a reason why I, I've moved to the, the Barnes TTSX generally because it kills deer extremely efficient. Uh, and maybe I need to rethink that. But uh, here's the Nosler Acubond, and I mean, it's almost a Picture perfect mushroom. Uh, you've got slightly more copper on one side, and uh, it performed admirably. You've got a very, very, very similar uh, temporary stretch cavity. The bullet uh, left the barrel at 2,510 feet per second, uh, which is where I thought my barns were. We'll get to that. Uh, so 2,510 feet per second, which is generally in the area that you would expect a 338.6 to be in. Um, impacted. Now, this is a boat tail, and it's leaving at a, a decent velocity, so it's, it's hitting faster than this. Uh, 2,353 in theory, is what, how fast it was going when it impacted this block. Now, I didn't put any cowhide or anything in front of it. It was just bare block. Um, 2353, and it penetrated an inch deeper. So it went 31 and 5 eighths inches deep in the block. An inch deeper than the 35 Whalen, and uh, 3 inches deeper than the 30-06. Is it important? I don't know. Uh, rarely do you have a perfect shot on an animal, uh, so I will take as much penetration as I can get. Um, <clears throat> but this performed well, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's a very accurate load. It's got a great BC. Uh, a lot of times people overlook tailoring their bullet to the intended range that they're going to to shoot. 
if I were hunting longer range uh, than at my land, I'm going to shoot a bullet that expands at a much lower velocity. Now, I'm more familiar with the Barnes TC TTSX, and I know they say 1800 feet per second minimum impact velocity. I don't know what it is with the, the Acubana. I'll look it up if I can. Um, but to me, this looks like a much more functional bullet than this. Uh, you, There's no vast difference in these temporary cavities that, that I can see. Um, so having a bullet that's completely deformed and, and ready to fail does not seem like a benefit. I would rather have one uh, that penetrates much further. Uh, I mean, if you have a quartering away shot, um, I want something that, that's going to bust through everything and hopefully come out the, the front shoulder. Um, you might look at it differently. Uh, this is my opinion only. So, <clears throat> the uh, so the next bullet we're going to look at is the 225 grain out of the 35 well. Um, some people shoot 180 grain out of a 35 wheeling at insane velocities. Um, I'm more of a heavier bullet is better, um, which is why I generally shoot this. Maybe not in the future, but uh, so here's a slightly light for caliber uh, 35 Whalen, and uh, let's see what happens. Well, uh, I would say that's rather impressive. Uh, you can see the bullet compared to the 338. Um, this one is heavily deformed, uh, but not so much as you're probably going to have a core jacket separation. Um, and it's interesting because that one penetrated the furthest of which I was able to recover. Um, so that left the muzzle at 2632 feet per second. Uh, that's more of what I should be seeing uh, out of my 338.6 with the 225 grain where I was 2510. I mean, I should be up about 100 feet per second faster. Uh, anyway, so uh, this is very good. Again, the temporary stretch cavity is very consistent with all, all the other bullets. Um, but the uh, penetration was much farther, uh, 33 inches. So, you know, more than two inches farther than any of the other uh, bullets we recovered. Uh, is two inches enough to matter? I have no idea. So I don't know if I said it, um, but with this, we only lost 15% of the weight, which is significant. This one only lost 4%, which I find impressive. 13%, I don't think I mentioned that uh, previously, and here, 11%. Um, so, 
much more deformation than in the 338.6, but we retained more weight. And that's kind of a testament to the AccuBond more so than the, the cartridge caliber diameter. Once it leaves the barrel, it, the chambering doesn't matter. It's, it's all the bullet, bullet diameter, and uh, velocity. So we penetrated 33 inches. That's great. Um, and I am likely changing my 35 well and load to be the 225 AccuBond. Uh, just looking at these tests. Um, I wanted my 35 Whelan to be a heavy penetrator. I built it to hunt bear. And the data right here shows similar uh, stretch cavity, temporary stretch cavity, whatever you want to call it, and uh, a larger diameter, uh, reasonably similar bullet, similar bullet retention, and uh, much more penetration. So I'm probably changing my 35 Whelan from 250 partitions to 225 acubons. Um, it's interesting. So here we're going to look at the 338-06 with my hunting load, uh, the Barnes TTSX 225 grain. So that hit the center of the block. I mean, all these shots were in about three inches of the uh, center, uh, veered right, and exited the block at about 37, 37 and a quarter inches of penetration. So it, it was at an angle, it didn't you know, come straight out. Uh, so let's try that again and aim a little to the left. So. And that one exited the center of the block, penetrated the entire 40 inches, um, <clears throat> which says to me there's not enough velocity because uh, the chronograph results on this. I have written down in my notes uh, from previous loads uh, those 25, 14 feet per second uh, with the Barnes TT. SX225, my 338.6. That's, that's the load I worked up. Um, I am R4350, and generally every time I chronograph it, it's within that, you know, give or take 10, 10 feet per second. So that's what I've written down. However, uh, I'm very low on ammo. Um, I had shot. Uh, a few deer this year and that's my main hunting rifle and uh, I haven't loaded for it for a couple of years so 
I was down to four rounds in the rifle and three in my stock bag. So seven rounds, and when I recorded this, it was still hunting season. So I didn't want to use those. I grabbed a box of 20 that I found in my closet that just said 338.6 TTSX. Um, so the velocity I was getting out of them was drastically lower. I don't know if it's a different load. I don't think it was a different load. Uh, I know I've changed primers. I've changed brass. I, I don't know what happened, but the muzzle velocity on that was 23.82. So, you know, a good 130 feet per second lower. Uh, not ideal, uh, but I rolled with it. And they both penetrated the hell out of this block. Um, and generally, I would look at that and say it didn't expand. Barnes publishes 1,800 feet per second impact velocity uh, to expand, and these were impacting at 2219, again, according to my Kestrel and the ballistic coefficient. It's not going to be 100 feet per second off. It's going to be close to that. So 2219, and if you look at the cavities here, I mean, that expanding, you've got... One here and one here, so they hit, I don't know, half an inch apart and expanded. Um, actually, this longest stretch cavity you see is from one of those, because I see blue fragments. Uh, the tip in the Barnes TTSX is, is blue, and you actually see a blue fragment right down here. So, I mean, it clearly expanded, and it just penetrated like crazy. Um, so did that twice, uh, when I looked at the footage, like we could see one of them, uh, I'm guessing the one that came out the side, because it had a higher velocity, because the one in the, the jello was long, uh, penetrated, there was a plywood, uh, backstop, um, as well as some dirt behind it, but there was a ply plywood backstop, and you could see it penetrated it clearly was not flying straight. <laughs> it, it penetrated it. And then uh, the second one that came out the back, I looked at the footage and you could see it, you could see the spot it hit the backstop and it bounced over and landed in front of the target. Uh, we looked for a good five minutes or so, which sounds short, but when you're actually looking in the grass, it's a long time. Uh, for the bullet, we didn't find it. But yeah, so it penetrated the block, left uh, massive internal damage, and exited. Uh, that explains a, a lot from what I see when I shoot deer. Um, some people might say that's a failure. I, I know a lot of people like to be like, oh, I found the, the bullet you know, on the opposite side hide. You know, right under the hide, you can feel a lump, you cut it, and there goes the bullet. It dumped all the energy into the, into the deer, caribou, elk, whatever the hell you're shooting. Um, awesome. Uh, I'm torn. I'm probably going to it's the Acumond on the 35 Willem, but I don't know why I would change in my 338.6. I need to get my muzzle velocity back up, or at least do some more testing is to figure out why it was 23.82. Um, that was very surprising. My zero was still on. Because uh, one thing you didn't see on camera, I had a uh, target board to the left of this to take a shot because one, I'm not shooting ammo. I normally shoot out of these rifles uh, just to see where to hold off to hit the center of the block. Um, but my zero was on, grants 100 yards. So, so I found that interesting, uh, but it certainly expanded. Wish I could have recovered a bullet. And uh, I mean, this track, I don't know if you can see that the highest tract which comes out like pew, top you can see a piece of blue right here 
I mean, that's the, the TTSX that veered off to the right and exited at about uh, 37 inches, uh, three inches short of the 40. Um, this is an interesting bullet. And what I have personally concluded, uh, it's obvious, I guess, <laughs> muzzle velocity matters. Um, and bullet weight matters. Uh, this, mm, I'm sure a 308 could do as good a job as a 30 out 6. Dare I say that? Um, but uh, higher muzzle velocity, higher uh, bullet weight is going to penetrate farther, as we saw versus, uh, you know, the 35 well unloads and. Bullet design clearly matters. I mean, I don't know about up here in your temporary cavity, but certainly in penetration. So one of the bullets, um, I mean, I, I like the Barnes TTSX, not based on these tests, but based on real world tests on uh, you know animals that have four hooves and are, are walking around. Uh, it's always proven well for me. And Generally, people think that the 22-250 is too small for deer or about the smallest you want to shoot deer with. In North Carolina, 22-250 is legal for deer. And I keep one in uh, the back of my truck during deer season as a backup. And I've hunted with it a few times. I've never taken deer with it. Um, you know, like, uh, where was I on all the hunt? Coming out of my tree stand, and uh, I go to, I use climbing stands, and it was a little higher than I thought, and muzzle of my 338-06 goes into the mud, and I'm not gonna just pass a cleaning rod through it. Uh, I was afraid to, of damage to the crown or something like that. Go back to the truck, grab the 22250, uh, and hunt with that. Um, father in law, or former father in law, comes down hunting in, uh, during Christmas time every year, and we, we go out hunting together, and uh, he typically uses that, that rifle. Um, it, it's a good rifle, and I load that with a 70 grain Barnes TDSX. It's a eight inch twist, so it, can, it stabilizes it great. Uh, I'm very curious to see how the Barnes TTSX 70 grain shoots through this gel um, in comparison to something like a, a 308, a 6 millimeter Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor, something that's uh, more commonly accepted for hunting. Uh, you hear people talk about 243 for hunting. Nobody really cringes at that, 22250. Um, I mean, it's not legal in a lot of places. So, that's one of the tests I want to do on test shotguns, and um, I mean this is meltable. I'll buy more blocks if I have to, but I found this very interesting. I'm sorry it took so long to get out. I really appreciate everybody watching. Even if you have negative comments, you want to tell me I, I talk too slow, I ramble, whatever. Tell me. <laughs> Give me input. Um, Tell me what you want to see tested in uh, blocks. Uh, I appreciate any comments. Stay tuned. I appreciate you watching. And until next time, enjoy.